So what I've got here is a steel bar and two weights are about 10 pounds each, I think. And they're attached to these uh, columns here. And they're actually nailed in a square around on both sides. And what we're gonna do is heat up the bar in the middle here. And what I anticipate happening is perhaps a slight expansion, it might not be noticeable. You might see the bar expand and you'll probably see some paint burning off and then you should see it sag. Now what I'm trying to explain here is why a sagging beam pulls in the columns at either end. Right now the beam is stiff, so this weight is being transferred straight down here. When the beam bends, the beam is no longer stiff so it can't resist anything pulling in, pushing in from the sides. The angle of this will make the force go down that way which should make the two columns go in from the side. So let's see what happens. I've got two torches. I'm just going to use my smaller one to start off with. And if it needs it, I'm going to bring my bigger one into play. So let's give it a go. So before I show you that, I'm going to do a slightly different demonstration. Here I've got two uh, columns and I've got two lengths of identical chain. Uh, one here and another one here. The difference between them is that this length of chain is, uh, has been welded so it's stiff and this is just a regular piece of chain. So what I'm going to do first is take the stiff piece of chain which would be the floor truss or a, a regular floor beam and attach it to these two columns and you'll see it uh, does a, a nice job of acting like a floor. I can even put on some load on it, live load, people walking around, and it acts just fine. But say this floor, this floor truss, this beam or whatever, was to lose its structural integrity and start to sag. That's going to be represented by this. Now this of course is a very extreme example, it's lost all of its integrity. But it demonstrates the principle of what happens when something is sagging and it's attached to something that was previously stiff. And one thing to note is say this is the core of the building, this is the outside, any exterior loads actually get transmitted through the floor because it's stiff, so this uh, will resist being pushed in from the side, so any deprivation of this column will be resisted by the floors, as well as uh, the floors holding up what is underneath them. So let me take this, uh, this floor off and replace it with a failed floor. And stick that there and move them out so they're straight. And straight away you can see that it does it is pulling in, it is not stable at all. If I pull it so it's perfectly straight, straight away as soon as it starts to sag a little bit, it's pulling in. Uh, the reason, of course, is that uh, uh, when you have something suspended between two points, you have this catenary action which means it's very, very difficult. When, when it's straight, pretty much all of the force is going this way if the uh, member is not stiff. So this is what happens. Whereas with the stiff floor, it's just fine.
So there you go, the uh, bar failed in the middle, which caused it to sag, which uh, pulled in the two beams from the side.